Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Satisfactory. Now, in this episode here, I'm going to be taking you through my vertical assembly line for modular frames. Now, this is the third evolution of my vertical frame design things that I've been working on. Started with this one over there, the idea of spiraling up around a central staircase. That didn't work out. Made a reinforced iron plate assembly line over here. And that definitely worked quite a bit better. It had product flowing up on this side and flowing up on that side and then kind of flowing down way over there. However, on this assembly here, we ended up optimizing all of that quite a bit more. So the product flows up on the right and that's all that ever happens over there. So up on blue and then as it finishes, it flows down on red. Now there were some sticky situations as we were dealing with the modular frame setup. So we'll be going over that and kind of how, how I had to work around some of those as well. Um, but all of this happened during a live stream last night. Uh, there's probably going to be a link to it if you want to check out all of the actual building action. But that was a really fun live stream, and you should definitely check it out if you're interested in that stuff. I live stream this stuff quite often over there on Twitch. So let's jump into the details and see how this thing really works. All right, so if we take a look at the flow chart here and everything that's involved with it, uh, what you'll see is that I have 87% efficiency up here at the top. So not all of these pieces of equipment are running at 100%. And this is a, it comes from my calculator as well. So what you do is you put in what numbers you want right here, and then it goes through the standard recipes and then kicks out what equipment is going to run. And then the efficiency base is based on how many pieces of equipment are there and it's potential total power draw. So that's how I'm getting that number. Even it's not really like a thousand percent accurate. Um, but the, 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 the way it works is essentially there would be the power I don't think would be completely steady. I don't think that really matters anyhow. You just make more coal generators, whatever. But the, uh, the main concept of how this is calculated is that if there's 2.8 used, then I round up to three and then you can see that there would be extra produced uh, in order to meet that demand. Uh, so what I did is kind of work through this on the flow chart in order to figure out what machines I was going to underclock and what machines I might overclock in order to create it nice, uh, a nice stable flow of product from ore to modular frame down here. So that's, that's where we're going to do a little bit more investigating and exploration of, of what I did. So if you did watch the live stream, there's going to be some extra stuff in here. Let's run through it from the very beginning. So over here, I have I have all of my miners set up, and it's it's feeding several different systems over here. So this was the reinforced iron plate that we ran last time, uh, and you can see that the product on that one flowed up and down. Uh, well, it flowed down on the very far side, but it flowed up on both sides of the equipment. We definitely improved on that from the last video to this one. So everything uh, throughout this system flows in or out on this side right here through this wall. So when you look up, everything is flowing upwards. It only goes one direction. And then if we need to split it, then we're going to split it. So as the ore is flowing in, you can see that we have all of the smelters down here. So to make this work and make this work just nice and easy, all I've done is just use a bunch of splitters in line. And then as this, overflows, right? We get to 100% right there of its total capacity. Then the rest of the ore moves on to the next machine. So this is where things start to get a little tricky because if you're only producing at 100% right here, but you have machines that can build up more stuff, uh, you, you end up having machines that are kind of left in the dust at the end. So you kind of, uh, a couple of techniques is turning off certain machines to let the inventory build up and then reactivating it and whatnot. Um, but the flow, you can see the flow of the product, if we just focus on that, it flows in here, gets processed, and then gets merged and kicked out on this side, flowing out to that far wall over there. Uh, now compared to this one over there, I did have one extra tile. So this, see how that's four right there? This is five long. So I was able to fit an extra smelter down here. And I feel like for a modular frame, which contains quite a bit more equipment, that that was definitely a good choice so down here on the bottom we're doing all of the iron ingots and those iron ingots get stacked up and flow out and and they move on up to the next layer let's go ahead and use this and we'll jump up to the second layer we kind of over jump it a little bit you just pop like that and then go back down I like to use jump pads it's not necessary but 
So the you'll see that the iron ingots, they're going to find their way in on the backside of these machines again, as we were saying, right up here. This gets split off and starts to feed these machines here. Now, notice that the very first machine, the way that I, I seem to get things to work here, is that the, if I needed to underclock or overclock a machine, I always did it uh, at the nearest junction. Rather than at the end, I did it at the very beginning. Uh, that lets the inventory build up faster on this one and then just move the rest of the product to the other ones. Another way of looking at this when we start to look at the flow chart here is that I could take this percentage and I actually divide that out by all of the machines so that they're all running at the exact same rate. Um, I decided to try to do this and that worked except for when I got to the reinforced iron plate down here which requires a lot of materials that are coming in before it in order to run to meet the demand for this guy right there. So. Uh, when we get up to that, all of those are running at 80% in order to to make four reinforced iron plates, or to make the iron, reinforced iron plates. Okay, what I'm trying to say right here is that there is 12 reinforced iron plates that are consumed for each uh, for every four modular frames, which is at 100% right there. So these normally run at five. So when you take them down to 80%, they're running at four per minute. And that just seems to make this work. I tried to do it with just one machine running slower and it just wouldn't really work. It was always waiting for that one last plate or something. So while this method seems to work here, it doesn't work everywhere. Anyhow, the second layer is producing all of, uh, all of the plates. And you can see obviously it flows in in one way, just loops back over here and then starts to head out. I'll explain this madness right there in, in just a minute. So let's put that on the back burner. Now, because this plate isn't going to be used until it ends up in the assembler, as we see in the flow chart over here, it actually just ends up in, in, in waiting. So if we take a look at how it's going up the, the spaghetti cube over here, it actually goes off to the far side right there and then just kind of loops back and forth until I use it up later. Now, we still have more of the ingots, and if we just get rid of this wall, you'll see what I'm doing right there, which isn't really what I wanted to do, but uh, there was a, a one of those wall conveyor units, and I actually went from this to the wall, wall conveyor hanger thing. What is that thing called? This one right there. So that piece of equipment was right here, and that's how I was able to split that off pretty easily, and then still get this angle right there in order to go up and and resync that to its layer stacking or whatever technical term I want to make up there let's move on to the to level three so this is going to be our rod production so there's five units that are used for rod production and those all get synced up into the same conveyor and then split off as need be into screws, but then they end up in the modular frames as well. So that's how that is flowing right there. And this is what it looks like in the game. So we're going to see the ingots. They're flowing in on the backside once again, right here. And they're getting split off into these machines. Once again, this first machine is underclocked slightly. Uh, I would overclock machines, but I just don't have a ton of slugs that I've found yet. So I only had one slug, so there's only one machine that I overclocked. This would be a good one to overclock because, as you can see, it expands a little bit further over here. So, you know, it doesn't really fit the standard footprint that it would have. So being able to crank up one of these machines quite a bit more would save me a lot of hassle of, of building this thing. But that's interesting and fancy, so... It's worth, worth building, worth explaining too. So as we move on out here, we can see the rods are now flowing out of the system. They're being merged onto a singular belt. If we move up to the next layer, we can see that at this point, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of the screw production that we need. And this gets interesting because as we are bringing in product, we're also going to be splitting it out. Um, so that we're not going to be using all of it. So the rods flow in like this on this layer and then curl back around to the point where it gets split off into these machines, which are making the screws. 
Now, uh, one of these screw machines, I believe I overclocked. Yes, that was this one. It's actually the first one that, yeah, once again, over here, it's the first one in line. I overclocked this guy, and you can see that it's it's producing. It, it seems like something's actually producing a little bit, almost too much. I don't think I have things perfectly synced, but uh, you can see this conveyor is moving, and it's it doesn't really stop that much, which makes me think that that's just about perfectly timed. I think you might see it hesitate every once in a while. We'll see. In order for things like this to play out, it takes a little while for things to show up. So let's move on to the next layer, and this is where we're getting into the assembler. So this is the reinforced iron plate level. So all of these machines are running at a reduced rate of four per minute. Now, to set this thing up and get it to run initially, what I ended up doing was getting rid of one of these wires and just letting the inventory build up letting the rods build up, letting the screws build up, um, just so that everything was stacked up and then everything from here on would be synced out. So you can see that we're, we have several iron plates, we have screws right there, and the key thing to look for here is if the numbers, after a while, if any of these are like zero or if they're 500s, you can see that this one's probably the first one in line, so therefore it's building up the most of its inventory. So you see the screws are flowing in, and they're getting split out here, and then the mm, the plates are flowing in on top of this as well. So this was kind of a tricky splitter thing to set up here. So I actually figured that out in the live stream, so here's the clip of that, because I think that shows it best. It works if you put the belt first. All right. Then the splitters. There's so much weirdness when it comes to the clearances in this game. I mean, I understand it's like a super complicated problem, but... Let's see if I can automate that. Oh yeah, there we go! Ha-ha! Thanks for the pro tip, guys. Wow, this is great. All right, so that does it for the reinforced iron plates. Let's move on to the very top level, which is going to be the modular frame unit. So one lonely assembler sits up here and just works away at the top of the world. So what we should see inside of here is hopefully a decent amount of inventory. Yes, there we go. And modular frames that are being produced at four per minute right there. So that completes uh, this flow chart right here. So from ore to modular frame, can see how that's working so how the conveyors work here is we just have these they flow up and that merges into the middle and then we also have the rods as well flowing into here like this so is this system 100 percent perfect no delays no i don't think so and i'm not sure that this system ever really could be i mean maybe maybe but uh, i don't know <laughs> um, but what i can see here is that this thing is producing the modular frames which is absolutely great because i hated handcrafting those things so there we have it i at least have four of these being produced per minute now to get uh, an even amount using the standard formulas here actually if you go down here and you go from four a minute to 40 a minute that's where things actually divide out perfectly However, that is a very, very large uh, assembly line in order to make well, what is essentially 10 times of this. So you can imagine how tall that would be. Maybe one day I'll get there. Now, of course, we're not quite done yet. Once we've created these modular frames, they need to get all the way back down to the ground level so that they can be picked up by a truck or something like that, or maybe a train, and transported somewhere else. Well. Uh, to do that, I have a storage container right here. That's just in case things get backed up. It's always a good thing to have. Uh, but this guy is running on a MK3 belt. I ended up using MK3 belts everywhere, just to kind of... Uh, I don't know. I like the little lights. They look cool at night. <laughs> and I think they might help with the delay. But I, it just zigzags back and forth down here until I end up in this spot where things got really interesting. So again, there was another way around this, which was overclocking this and never 
putting a floor here in the in the first place. But since there was a floor here, I, I couldn't get the conveyors to go back and forth um, through this wall. However, Cinevin over here actually sent me this video on Twitter the other day, and that made me think, okay, well, here's a good time to try this try this one by one conveyor elevator thing out. So you can see how how this thing is set up. All right, so let me let's just let Cinevin walk us through this. So you set a ramp here. And then once he gets the conveyor stackers, check this out. So you put one up like that, and then you rotate it, put it right there, and then put one low. And then you get rid of the ramp, and then you can place it all the way down on the ground level. Now, it's important to start at the bottom because I found that you actually cannot build conveyor stackers down. They only ever seem to go up. So, you know, try to work from the bottom up. And then you can kind of do stuff like this which is super handy. So thank you so much for sharing that with me, Cindy Vin. In this situation, I ended up making good use of it. And you can see that I used it to take the product down. So this is actually a fairly legitimate method for a vertical type conveyor. If you wanted to take product down without actually building all of this right here. That being said, it's not the most, definitely not the cheapest way to get stuff from one level to the next because you have a ton of conveyor stackers that you're building, so that adds up pretty quick. Not to mention you gotta click all this stuff too, so that gets kind of annoying. You end up clicking while you're walking around in a circle, <laughs> and it, you know, it'll make you dizzy pretty quick, but still, it, it's really cool to watch. Anyhow, that finds its way down to the next layer right there, and then I just go back to kind of its standard back and forth arrangement as it's trying to find its way out all the way to the bottom here where I have a storage container full of modular frames. Now there's a couple other things that I've put in here uh, such as a conveyor system that I use to transport myself to this modular frame facility. That's nice and fun and obviously this is how you go about getting up to a higher level if you want to. It's a little dangerous. If you get it just right you can actually skip a layer, but I have not gotten it just right. And then you might be thinking, well, how do you actually go about getting down from here? Well, that's where this comes in. Angular jump pad. <laughs> Don't mess it up. Woo! You'll end up jumping over this machine. And then hitting the jelly. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool. A little bit of suspense every time you have to go and view that. As you can tell, my health is not 100% full because, well, I experience death often. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. That is how my vertical modular frame assembly line is set up and operates. I like it. I think it was pretty cool. It was a very fun live stream. Thank you to all of you guys that have been supporting me over there on Twitch and to, to all of you guys that have been supporting me here with your likes, subscribes, and everything else that you guys have been doing here on YouTube and Patreon. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for helping me out here. Thanks for watching, guys. If you got some ideas for me if uh, for other uh, vertical assembly lines or other just crazy ideas go ahead and leave them down there in the description below I might make them into the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day if I've earned your subscription Then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome guys. Peace Brothgar out <laughs>